Hey guys, welcome back to STM32 Coding for Everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add another timer overflow onto our existing program. Just like we did the multiple external interrupt, where we basically were checking different interrupt coming from different GPIO ports. Now, in this tutorial, we're going to add another timer overflow that we're going to be using in the same callback function that's going to be executing at a different uh, timer period than the one we are already having right now that's running at the time of 200 milliseconds. So we are having an overflow every 200 milliseconds. So that is attached on timer three. So let's go back into the STM32 IOC interface right now here. And we're going to add timer two so i'm going to click on timer two so that's the only settings we're going to do here we don't have to do extra more settings so timer two enable the internal clock source once that is enabled you have to also enable the global interrupt for timer two and we're going to do the settings now let's go ahead and do the settings now right now we already have this timer overflowing every 200 milliseconds so we're going to set up the one that's going to overflow every one second okay so i'm going to go ahead and pass the 64,000 value because remember on the previous tutorial we discovered that timer 2 and timer 3 are running on the same apb1 bus that is running on the 64 megahertz frequency Great, so we're going to go ahead and add our counter period to a value of 1000 that we already explained in the previous tutorial. And I'm going to enable the auto reload preload. Great, then the next thing is to update the event. Okay, now we're going to add another external LED on this board. If you do not have an external LED, you can always add a counter variable that's going to overflow and show you an indication. I'm going to go ahead and add the LED and I will turn it to an output. Great. So then we also need to just label this one to LED0. We already have LED1, so we're going to put this one as LED0. Great. So that is about everything we need right now. And we can go ahead and generate our code. Now, before we generate the code, let's head back into our program here and i'm going to just copy uh, this code here okay i'm going to copy that now the reason why we have to copy this code because after the code generation have been completed it's going to override every piece of code that we already uh, wrote on our program so to preserve our code i'm just going to go ahead and make a copy Great. So you should also do the same if you have the same code running. Okay. Then the rest of the stuff they is still going to be available for us. So let's head back to the IOC interface and we can go ahead and click the generate code. And yes. So do you want to save and save before the code generation? Yes. And then we're going to generate. Once that process is completed, you can open up your main.c and you're going to realize that you now have two variables for timer two and timer three that are now defined, but the code snippet that you have here is no longer there. That's the reason why we needed to copy it so that we can then now paste our code here. Then we don't have to uh, type again the same code because we're going to be working from this code that's where we're going to add uh, whatever we want to achieve when timer two overflow because right now we only this function is basically handling the timer three overflow only but we now added the timer two overflow as well onto our equation here so i'm going to go ahead and make another copy of this uh, variable basically this function call here and I will copy and then here I'm going to pass uh, two so that we can also start timer two. Great, if we open our header file here for the STM32 timer delay, call include header file main.h, we're going to notice that we've got more variable definition here for the LED. So we've got still on GPIO A, now we've got LED one and LED 
7, right? Pin 1 and pin 7. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to go back into our main function here. Then we basically need to include the call to handle the timer overflow from timer 2. So to do that, I'm going to introduce an if statement. Okay, so we're going to do an if else statement, else if, okay? Now it's still blank. So what are we actually testing? What are the conditions? Now the condition is this variable because now remember every time the function is being called back, okay, we are basically just looking at what this variable is providing us. Now this variable is pointing into the overflow from the timers on the global interrupt for the timer. So what we need to do is we need to specify from which timer because that is the value that this variable is going to be carrying. So what we're going to then say if h term, okay, if that variable point to an instance, an instance that is equal to a timer two, okay, if this is the case, then we want to execute all this code because remember we still have that variable counter that is going to be incrementing every time timer to uh, basically overflow then we can basically just go ahead and copy this line here okay that's the magic line for us here and paste it into the if statement here and change this to number three great so now what we're going to do here is basically just copy this line of code right so you cannot do coding without mastering the art of copying so this time around we're going to change here to led zero pin now we need to change this variable so that it can reflect the overflow for timer three so what i'm going to say i'm going to just say counter three overflow okay counter okay we didn't write it correctly the previous time so pardon me so let's just go ahead and correct that so that's gonna be a uh, counter okay so i'm going to correct that one as well so counter two overflow so that's counter two overflow this is counter three overflow so we need to go ahead and correct that here oops our variable definition was taken away it was taken away so we need to uh, basically reinitialize this variable so i'm going to go ahead and u int 32 underscore t okay then we're going to say counter uh two overflow okay is equal to zero okay then i'm going to basically just make a duplicate of this and paste it here then we're going to change that variable to three. So counter three overflow. Now let's just make sure that it is exactly the same counter three overflow now, because this is very much case sensitive. If it's not written the same way, it's not going to work. Okay, now it seems like it is exactly the same. Now we can go ahead and basically, uh, the next thing is just to build this. So I'm going to click on here and build. So we give this a chance and let it complete the build. Okay, it's built, completed with no error. So that's basically good news for us and no warning. So we can go ahead and run this. So let's click and run. So we basically should have run it uh, with a debug so that we can see the variables. Okay, first let's just load it in. Okay, it is loading and we should see two LEDs uh basically blinking at a different rate okay now it seems like both of them are blinking at exactly the same rate is this normal now we need to review our code here now let's go ahead and check this code out and find out why they are all blinking at exactly the same rate because previously this led was blinking much faster at 200 milliseconds so that was on timer three so let's see the counter period oops it's 1000 Okay, so what basically happened when we generated a new code, the value was still set at 1000 on the IOC uh, interface. So it basically override the 200 that we had here. So I'm going to go ahead and change it back to uh, 200. Okay, so that should make this LED to blink faster than the green one. Okay, now 
the next thing here since we've got some variables so we're going to basically monitor them so i'm going to go ahead and hit the debug so that we can open the debug window okay so this is going to just build uh, one more time and we're going to enter the debugger great now the debugger is running and if we go ahead and click on resume okay we're going to see that okay so now this green one is basically the one that is running much faster okay and the red one is running at one second delay the green one is running at 200 milliseconds but we are having a problem here so we need to fix our counter expression here okay let's make it counter okay counter two counter two overflow enter okay there we go the value is already at 34 which means it's been recorded already so we catch up so i'm going to add another one here so just copy and add a new expression and we're going to change this to three and we enter so now you can see that the counter three overflow is basically 263 so that one is running much faster okay so that is running much faster here counter three overflow so that is the led zero so that the new led we added and you can see it is running much faster and is that the one that we basically set up for 200 milliseconds so counter three counter three 200 milliseconds let's just find that there we go 200 milliseconds so i basically swap the leds uh, on the callback function okay so you can see us they are updating so that is exactly how you can have multiple counter timer overflow variable running on your stm32 board and you can do all sort of things with it so thank you guys for watching if you find it useful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel until next time cheers